Hello and welcome to my space here. This is going to be my extended reading for my Tarot Tuesday weekly guidance and energy update from my blog post, which is intended for the week of October 20th through October 26th. So um, whenever you come across this, um, take these messages as they were meant for you, even if the date is not the same. So just trust and receive that you're here for a reason. So if you'd like to check out the blog to receive more answers, I'll definitely leave the link below. So um, if you're interested in that, go ahead and take a look there. Um, I also like to remind you that your intuition is your best guide above all else, no matter what guidance I'm giving you. Just make sure you listen to, the, listen to those own intuitive nudges within yourself, however this applies to you, and it could resonate in so many different ways. Parts of it may resonate, parts of it may not. So take what does and leave the rest. And also I like to remind you that gender does not apply here. So I like to use like he or she for masculine and feminine purposes, but um, you know, I believe that we all have masculine and feminine energies within us, so we can all access these energies at any time. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get into with uh, get into it with what I pulled for what we need to know for this week. So the card that kind of flung itself out was this judgment card. Which I love the energy of judgment. Traditionally on the um, like Rider Waite tarot, it has this angel who is supposed to represent Archangel Gabriel. So I'm feeling really closely with Archangel um, Gabriel um, just because I like to use my voice, but I also struggle to use my voice and I have a lot of fears of using my voice, right? So what I was picking up right away is this fears, this fear of judgment. Um, and like, because what I pulled to clarify with the judgment card was this fork in the road. So this card to me is a card of like needing to make a decision or being at like a crossroads in your life and you know needing to go in a new direction but you might have like fears or judgments that keep you from moving in the direction that you know your soul is guiding you to because think of the judgment card as kind of this energy of this this awakening this feeling like called towards your soul's mission kind of feeling this energy of renewal this energy of like ascending this energy of feeling kind of like you know, on the traditional judgment card, they're kind of standing there naked and they have their arms outreached, you know, they're out stretching their arms and they're like, you know, this angel is like singing down to them playing this trumpet. So, um, and you can kind of see the energy of <laughs> this little mouse looking up to the sun, like this bigger thing, like, and think about mountains too. I was like picking up on this energy of like, you're moving mountains with your ability to, uh, you know, move beyond your judgments of yourself and allow yourself to express yourself fully because that's kind of the energy of the throat chakra, which is associated with Archangel Gabriel, also associated with the color blue, but it's this energy of feeling, you know, like allowing yourself to express yourself authentically, honestly, creatively, you know, allowing your, your truest self to shine. You kind of think of the sun on the card, like that's your soul. And like your small self could be like that mouse, you know, like you're, because I was picking up on this energy of like, you know, your soul is wanting to expand, and that could be an energy of expansion. This could be, I'm picking up on spiritual growth. So your soul is wanting to grow, your soul is wanting to expand, but your small self is wanting you to, like, no way, to hide behind the clouds, to, like, put yourself down. You might criticize yourself. You might really judge yourself and be really harsh on yourself as a way to keep you, like, small, as a way to not allow yourself to step into your biggest power, your fullest power, your fullest self. And I'm, pick, I'm working with the energy of the Queen of Pentacles this week, which is all about our personal power. And, and I was picking up on this energy of integrity. And the more you make decisions, the more you make decisions to align with your highest self and to live in alignment with your highest self, the more you're literally moving mountains, the more you're creating, um, you're, you're creating space in order to receive um, all that you desire. But a lot of you might not, I'm picking up also on this energy, you might not believe that you're worthy of these desires, that your soul is like, yes, you are worthy. Like, your soul might be giving you so many messages about what you deserve, about what you're worthy of, about what you can have and what you can possess and the power that you possess. And you might be like, no way, like this is not true. Like you might second guess yourself. Your ego might come in a lot and be like, you know, it, it tries, your ego is going to put your down, put you down. It's going to second guess like your, your inner knowing. Your inner knowing is your intuition. So there's this energy of really trusting your gut this week. That's totally the solar plexus chakra, which is associated with um, the energy I'm working with this week is this energy of like self-empowerment, this energy of working with the Queen of Pentacles, knowing your worth, knowing your value, knowing that you are worthy of having everything you could ever imagine. Like you deserve to be healthy, you deserve to feel strong, you deserve to feel respected. You have to, you have to believe that you deserve those things, otherwise you won't act in those ways that allow you to receive and to kind of create these new paths. And I was picking up on this fork in the road card is that your path may ask you to, to you know, go against the status quo to be different, to be, 
you know, a little bit out there, to be weird, to be to do things in your own way and know that that is still valuable. And you might have fears of being judged for doing things in your own way or to, or doing things differently or doing things that are not what the society teaches you to do or what your parents teach you to do, you know. So as you make these adjustments to live in alignment with your highest self and to, to kind of re, because we're picking up on this energy of like, um, re-evaluating our beliefs. What are our core, core values? And it's Mercury retrograde right now, so it's the perfect time to go inward, right? And to, what do I value? To me, I value my health. And that's, you know, that's the energy of embodying the Queen of Pentacles and truly living in alignment with your body. Living in alignment, because like our body will tell us signals when we're, when we've kind of veered off our soul's path, we're gonna feel it in our bodies. We're gonna feel stuck, we're gonna feel like we have to constantly watch our backs, you know, we're going to, it's kind of like, think of this as the, they're kind of in this forest and I'm picking up every time I, I experience this within myself where I get into this place of like questioning myself and, you know, questioning my own knowing, I kind of get into this place where there's like a fork in the road, right? And I'm seeing like three different directions I could go possibly. I'm just saying this for what it is, but I like, I'll see visions of like, sometimes I'll be following my path, following my path and like, connected to myself, connected to my body, and I'm feeling really good, I'm like, yes, this is the path, this is right, like, I'm feeling good, yes, yes, and then all of a sudden, you know, I get to this fork in the road, and I have to make a decision to align with a different part of myself, so sometimes, instead of making that decision, we can, I see, like, sometimes I'll just, like, spin round and round in this same, you know, fork in the road, the same place we've come to, the same stop we've come to, and we get the opportunity to see, okay, which way can we take our lives, which way do we want to direct ourselves, which way do we want to go, when we take the time, you know, because I was picking up on this energy of self-care, and I'm focusing on self-care this week with the Queen of Pentacles, is when we're in this fork in the road energy, our doubts are going to be loud as fuck, you know, our fears and our worries are going to be screaming at us, you know, to like, turn around, go back the other way, like, you know, think about a haunted house, oh my god, I just thought of that, I just saw a vision of a haunted house, and it's that kind of year, you know, like, you know, like, something shouting at you, your fears are shouting at you, there's something just around the corner, you know, like, there's this energy of needing to care for yourself because this sense of excitement about what is coming could lead into nervousness if you're not grounding your energy. So if we become very like anxious, we'll be overly masculine and we'll be, you know, trying to find the strategy, trying to find our way out of the haunted house. How do we get out of this haunted house? You know, that's a very masculine energy. There's got to be a way out, you know, <laughs> but allowing yourself to kind of take a step back and be in your more feminine energy allows for you to kind of rise above and then you don't have to get out of anything you're not trapped because you're seeing from a higher perspective and, you're, and then you know you're like nope i can get through this i can get through this and you have to be able to take care of yourself in those moments when your your fears are coming out of the corners or they're coming out of the woodwork <laughs> when all your fears are coming out of the woodwork you know can you just like tell them to take a back sit, step back and chill like you're gonna have to learn how to create this like sanctuary for yourself and that's kind of what self-care is all about is like when you're making those hard decisions for yourself that you know you need to make, you're going to have a lot of fears, you're going to have a lot of doubts arise, and can you take care of yourself in those moments so you don't keep, um, you know, staying in that circle and repeating those same cycles, and like, you can do this, I do this all the time, so you're going to have to be really gentle with yourself, and that's what the Queen of Pentacles, when we embody her energy, think of Mother Mary, I mean, she is the most delightful ascended master, the most delightful, <laughs> the delightful being that ever was, you know, if you really allow yourself to be in that energy, you begin to, like, Remother yourself and kind of, you know, you nurture your value and you nurture your worth and you tell yourself, you can get through this, you can do this, you might be scared and you might be sad and you might be frustrated and you might not know the, all the way what's going to happen, you may not know, but you can still feel safe, you can still feel secure, you can still feel anchored and grounded and that's what working with the Queen of Pentacles helps us to do, is to come back into our bodies, get out of our overactive mind, out of our fears, out of our doubts, out of our worries, and to just truly tear it care for ourselves and tend to ourselves with immaculate care, with like nourishing our bodies with healthy foods, by getting exercise, by getting enough sleep, by moving really slowly. And as we move into winter here, guys, it's literally snowing. It went from no snow on the ground. This is the first snowfall of the year and there's probably like already two inches and that's been within the last couple of hours. Like it's so crazy. It's like, you know, you're, the seasons are, we're moving really slowly at this time of year and it's more into our feminine energy. And so, you know, we're moving into the shadow we're not seeing things as clearly and this can really begin to distort our perception so we have to stay really anchored in our own knowing 
and our own vibration. Otherwise, we're going to get caught up in all the fears and all the hysteria of the world right now. Think about like politics and think about all, and like that's our stability, that's our foundation. That's like, you know, that's going to rattle us this time of year if we don't take the time to care for ourselves and love ourselves unconditionally. And that's what we're learning this week is a lot of us were taught to only love ourselves when we were being behaving good. And then when we, you know, when we mess up or we fall off the track or we fail or we do something that's not in alignment or not in integrity and we feel bad about it instead of shame spiraling and keeping ourselves stuck there and like wallowing in a self-pity party which I was the queen of like I was taught how to pit how to wallow in self-pity literally I was literally taught that and so a lot of times it can be really you know easier because we're used to feeling pity we're used to feeling that but we can become addicted to those feelings of feeling so like not good about ourselves and that we just want to run away and we just want to hide away because we don't want to face what we're feeling but if we can really begin to immerse ourselves in those feelings and then just take care of ourselves in them and not be like neglecting ourselves and filling, our, filling ourselves with maybe like harmful foods which I'm a pro at too and Mother Mary really helps you with like binge eating or with eating disorders or you know emotional eating and you have to remember you have to give yourself grace because you're going to eat emotionally you're going to you're going to do those things that you know you're not really supposed to do because you're trying to comfort yourself and that's what we're learning here with the with the Queen of Pentacles is how to comfort ourselves rather than to judge ourselves and criticize ourselves and judge ourselves and put ourselves down. Like, no, can we learn to build ourselves up and love ourselves unconditionally, even when we're not behaving our best, even when you're not feeling your best. If you feel like complete shit right now, that's okay. You're still lovable. You know, you're still valuable. You're still worthy, even when you're not functioning as your highest self, right? You still deserve that love. That's when you need it the most. So anyway, that's kind of the energy I'm picking up there is really learning to create and I was picking up on this energy of the Divine Mother which is really about creating this beautiful energy for us to feel like we're held like if you're feeling abandoned or you're feeling rejected or your heart's feeling broken or you're feeling alone you know like allowing yourself to hold yourself to be there for yourself and you know shine your light on yourself like and shine your light on your darkness on your shadow like your shadow is going to be out and the, the whole point is to find that value in our divinity and our humanity like to really truly love ourselves and to love our humanity and to love our shadow our shadow is going to act out our shadow is going to be irrational our shadow is going to you know it's built to survive right you know so it's going to do things that and you're going to have to like laugh at it and be like what the heck like you know and like just give yourself some <clears throat> some love and like i said don't be so hard on yourself be a little bit more gentle towards yourself this week and maybe that's what the fork in the road is is like can i make this decision to love myself unconditionally can i make this decision to be kind to myself and that could totally shift your alter your entire life path if you just started to be kinder towards yourself you'd be amazed at how your life begins to shift to to allow more kindness into your life you know so if you're wanting more respect how can you respect yourself more how can you listen to your body when it's telling you that you're not feeling good when it's telling you that it's not reacting well to a certain food when it's telling you that you know when it's speaking to you can you listen to it rather than neglecting it We've been taught to neglect our intuition, to ne neglect our body's wisdom, to neglect our emotions, and to put our focus on the external world. And that really burns you out. That makes you feel really tired. A lot of women are, um, not even just women, but also men as well, but there's this energy of martyrdom. And a lot of men can be martyrs as well. They put everybody else before themselves, and then they neglect themselves, and then they feel anger or resentment. They're like, oh, I'm always doing everyone, everything for everyone else, and nobody does anything else for me, you know? And it's like... But a lot of times these men or these women are over giving, you know, and they don't even leave any room or any space in their life to receive because they have deep fears of intimacy. They don't believe they're worthy of being held. They don't believe they're worthy of being loved and helped, you know. So a lot of times, you know, we can really want that help and we can really want to be held and we can really want to be loved, right? But if that's not what we believe love is, then we're going to push it away, you know, because we have fears of it. We don't feel like we're worthy of it because we didn't receive it in childhood. Maybe you grew up with parents that couldn't help you emotionally, that couldn't help you through their emotions. Maybe they act, reacted really strongly to you when you had strong emotions. And this taught you to neglect your emotions rather than to show up for them and to help yourself through them and to express them. like through different forms of creativity. So instead of over giving to other people and feeling really drained, how can you give to yourself by doing the things that make you feel good, that allow yourself to express yourself creatively? How can you put yourself, how can you give yourself more time to do the things that make you happy? Because it's your responsibility to create happiness, to create love, to create that connection for yourself. And so when you stop 
over giving and expecting it to come from somebody who can't give it to you if you allow yourself to place a boundary and then to take that time that you would have spent on other people and you put it into your hobbies you put it into your passions you put it into your purpose you put it into your joys you put it into your career you put it into your health you see what i'm getting at here you're investing in different things now as you're investing in different things you're going to make a new path for yourself you're going to allow yourself to you know create the path and it's your job to create the path your path can look whatever like whatever you want it to but a lot of times we're taught to live how other people want us to live in order to please other people so that we don't upset anyone you know like we don't want anyone upset at us we don't want anyone mad at us because maybe we had that happen to us as children maybe our parents got really mad and they reacted really strongly to that and so we don't want anyone to get mad at us you know so we tiptoe we tiptoe around other people and then we feel this this sense of like we're not supported, right? And so we have to really begin to create that support for ourselves by doing those things that make us feel good, that make us feel healthy, that make us feel strong, that make us feel respected, that make us feel joy. You know, doing those things, that's our responsibility. So that being said, let's move on to what we're not seeing clearly this week. All right, Spirit. <clears throat> what are we not seeing clearly this week with the fork in the road and judgment? And um, I just want to mention that, like, you know, because there's the mouse on the card, and there's a llama, and there's an owl, and there's kind of that energy of trusting your own intuition, and that's totally the owl. It's a white owl. And then there's also this monkey. So those might be animals that, if you want to look up their meaning, if they, any of them resonate or stick out to you, or you've been seeing them around, like, um, or they've been appearing to you quite frequently, then look up the meaning to them, and they're, this, they're spirit animals that are guiding you this week to help you you know, move beyond judgments of yourself and to make a decision. I think this decision is to, like, love ourselves unconditionally, despite, um, you know, all the judgments, because we're going to have judgments. That's part of being human, right? We have to accept our humanity. We have to accept that we're going to judge. But can we see them kind of, like, floating by as clouds rather than, you know, identifying with them and believing that we are these certain things that we have experienced in the past and you aren't your past experiences you have the right to change to be different anytime you choose to anytime you want to that's your free will and free will plays a huge important part in our destiny and creating our life path and creating our destiny you have to use your free will otherwise you can't just expect things to happen to you you have to like live in alignment with those things you have to be that version of yourself which is the hardest part, right? Which makes it challenging. Because we want, you know, we don't want to do that work. <laughs> but it's easier being who we were told to be than it is to be who, than it is to find out and create our own path of who we are, right? Okay, so what are we not seeing clearly this week, Spirit? Yay, I love it, Ace of Pentacles. So we are working with pentacle energy and this is like i love the ace of pentacles especially on this card because it always reminds me of physical health like look at how he's dancing there and it always actually reminds me of the heart chakra connecting with the energies of mother mary connecting with archangel raphael look at all the green on the card and i think it's like a lizard maybe <clears throat> or an alligator of some sort but i love all the green on the card and the pink heart so i just love that because yes there's this energy of what we're not seeing clearly is we're getting we're being given an opportunity and that's what the ace always represents to me it's like this opportunity from spirit that's like here we're giving you this gift like are you going to receive this gift like and opening our hearts to receive and creating space in our hearts to receive and a lot of times we keep our hearts closed off because we've been hurt in the past you know so we can't ever allow ourselves to receive love if it's all closed up and that was me for sure excuse excuse me it's like i had a lot of um, past pain that would really arise and it would keep me from making decisions based in love and that's kind of this energy of like this fork in the road are you going to choose to make a decision from like loving yourself or are you going to choose to make a decision to like punish yourself and there's no need a lot of us have been taught to punish ourselves and that punishing ourselves is love but really to me it's this energy of discipline and that's that energy of like showing up for yourself you know sitting down and meditating to create that silence and to create that presence with yourself to feel that connection you know, disciplining yourself to go out for a walk or go out for a run or to get some exercise in order to create that heart health and to feel that you know connection to your body you know and then like allowing yourself to express yourself creatively like creatively and having you know the will to sit down and express yourself in whatever form it looks like for you and this is like these are forms of like therapy that are actually just 
you know, they're like, they're just different mod modalities that will help you to feel really good about yourself. And you can see like on this card, it's kind of, this little lizard looks very happy. And like I was saying, it's this energy, we're learning how to cultivate and create our own happiness, right? Rather than depending on it from somebody outside of us or how much money we have in our bank account or, you know, how valued we are at work or by other people. Can we truly find our own value within ourselves? And can we nurture it? Can we nourish it? Can we, you know, can we grow it? And this, it's this energy of connecting to the earth. So think about earth. And I want you to think about keywords like patience, like being very patient with yourself, going very, very slow. Think of earth energy. It moves very slow. Out of all the energies, it's the slowest, you know. So think of just growing. Think of like gardening and tending to your thoughts and just being very, <laughs> very like slow with yourself. Talk to yourself with lots of kindness. Um, and there is this energy of to get lots of exercise. And I love that because working, you know, there's this energy of cardio. And it's like healing our heart. I think we're getting this opportunity to heal our hearts. And this time of year, our hearts are expanding, right? So we're wanting to feel more love. And uh, But a lot of times we have fears against fears of love. Like maybe we believe love is pain or suffering or self-sacrifice. There's this energy of like we were speaking of earlier of that martyrdom and that self-sacrifice. We believe that putting ourselves last is how we receive love. And we were taught to earn love by being needed. So a lot of times you might think that if you're not needed you're not loved and then you don't give yourself love and you might like put yourself down or you might criticize yourself or judge yourself or tell yourself you're not good enough you know and instead in those moments how can you create energies of happiness how can you create joy how can you create passion how can you create those feelings on your own by moving your body and you can even see he's moving his body on it you know, like his feet are moving it's like connecting to the earth connecting your feet to the earth i love one of my favorite ways to express my emotions and to just move them so they don't become stuck or stagnant in my body. It's just like putting on my favorite music. Like I literally will just put shuffle on my phone and then I just move my body to the music. Or, you know, and I just allow myself to move really slow. Sometimes I dance. Sometimes, you know, I'm stretching. It's kind of just like allowing that self, allowing yourself that time for you. And when you've been taught to put yourself last, it's going to feel like betrayal or like you're doing something wrong when you actually begin to put yourself first or you begin to show up for yourself and you begin to say, you know, like I'm putting myself first, like, and a lot of mothers or, you know, parents in general, they don't realize that if they were actually putting themselves first and valuing their health and making sure that their health was taken care of, and that means your mind health, your body health, your spiritual health, your physical health, putting all that first actually will allow you to care and show up for your relationships, your children, your partner, your business, your coworkers, your friendships, like showing up in those relationships will just become, everything will fall next to you putting yourself first and like the universe is going to support you putting yourself first you know so it's going to align everything so that you know everything is taken care of and you don't have to carry the weight of the world around on your shoulders and a lot of us were taught how to do that to carry other people's emotional burdens to carry their judgments of us to carry them around as who we are they can make you feel very weighed down very tired very trapped very stuck very oh it's just like not a good energy so it's like this is an energy of expansion and freedom and allowing ourselves to truly be seen from our heart space and making those decisions to reveal our heart. And that's the hardest part is because vulnerability takes courage. It takes bravery. It's scary to share yourself. It's scary to, you know, share your heart because maybe you've been broken hearted in the past or, you know, you've given your heart away and you were rejected, you know. So being really kind to yourself in those moments when you're you know, allowing yourself to express yourself vulnerably is going to allow you to, to create this, like, cocoon of, like, comfort. And I am just seeing, like, butterflies could be a message for you as you're going through this transformation, you know, like, there's transformation happening. You know, creating that comfort, creating that cocoon for yourself, going inward and just, like, creating this sense of, like, relaxation within yourself by doing different things for your body. I love self-massage. That's another way to move really slow, but to also connect with your body. Especially while you're doing other things or you know you're just taking some time out for yourself it's a great way to meditate so that's something i was just picking up on but anything to get the heart chakra open so lots of cardio like or moving really slow there's two different spectrums but i encourage you to get both because that more cardio is think of more like your masculine energy it's very exerted you're exerting your energy and you're going to want to use up your masculine energy during this time because otherwise it might become stuck and you might become you know, you might start to overthink and create a lot of anxiousness. So if you can use your masculine energy to exert your energy in some way, whether it be through some, you could box. I love boxing to music, you know, like getting your aggression out, getting like moving that sexual energy up into your body so that you feel very, you know, you're opening your heart space. You can really use your sexual energy to pull it up into your solar plexus chakra. 
which would be your power center, but then up into your heart and allows your heart to expand. So you can really use your sexual energy instead of outputting it, especially men or women, you know, like allowing this energy to move up. This is why I like to dance because it allows the energy to move up into my solar plexus chakra. Then it gives me this sense of empowerment. It makes me feel strong. It makes me feel brave. It makes me feel courageous. And I connect to that inner light. I connect to my inner strength. And then that allows for me to have my heart open. And then I can be vulnerable and I can make decisions from a place of love rather from this place of fear or lack or scarcity. But from this place of feeling really connected to my heart space. And the heart, and the heart chakra to me is all about connection and like comfort and compassion and forgiveness. And even the judgment card is about this energy of forgiveness in my opinion. So how can we forgive ourselves for the times we've, you know, betrayed ourselves or the times we've, you know, abused ourselves or the times we've let ourselves be used or the times we've let ourselves be disrespected or treated like garbage. You know, a lot of times we keep ourselves trapped in those situations because we can blame another person rather than taking accountability because it takes, you know, it takes a lot of honesty to look at yourself and be like, wow, why am I allowing myself to be treated like this? You know, why am I, why am I treating myself like this? You know, instead, instead you can be in a partnership and you can just project it all onto another person. I feel this way because this person acts this way. I feel this way because this person makes me feel this way. You know, you have somebody to blame rather than taking accountability, taking responsibility and be like, wow, where can I really create more self-respect? Where can I really create more self-worth? How can I make myself feel good about myself? How can I take responsibility for my emotions and my mental health so that I can, you know, show up to my relationship from this place of vulnerability and to be my truest self and to allow myself to receive that same vulnerability, that same openness, that same generosity back from others because we can't receive it from another person. If we're stuck in this energy of like resentment or anger or, you know, bitterness, that's what we're going to receive more in our external reality to show us to heal those things. So if you're feeling that in any sort of your relationships or, you know, if you're feeling that in any area of your life, <clears throat> it's mirroring to you how to connect with your heart space again, how to truly love yourself unconditionally. But what else here, spirit? What are we not seeing clearly with <clears throat> the Ace of Pentacles? So really forming a self-care routine will really benefit you this week to help you feel more secure and stable and strong within yourself. Because maybe you were taught to be really weak or maybe you were taught to allow yourself to be walked all over. Maybe you were taught to treat yourself like crap by your parents or your, like, by your, you know, caregivers. So learning how to really caretake yourself, especially if you had to caretake your parents in any aspect, mentally, emotionally, physically, you know, in any sense of the word, if you had to caretake your parent and you were left neglected or abandoned or you, your needs weren't met or you weren't loved in the way that you needed to be or you weren't cared for in the way you were needed to, needed to, like, you're going to replay that in your adult relationships to mirror to you to that, that really relationship you learned to have with your very first relationship. So it can suck if you had parents like that that neglected you or didn't take care of you or didn't know how to, but learning how to forgive them and take responsibility to be that parent for yourself and to give yourself that own love and care that you desperately needed but didn't receive, you know, that will just make you feel empowered in yourself and you'll feel a lot stronger for, you know, taking care of yourself. What are we not seeing clearly with the Ace of Pentacles spirit? Yes, love this. Peace number 23 or 5 and I love the dove on the car the dove is always a representation of like peace or like this energy of like spirituality and I was picking up on this energy of forgiveness this energy of Jesus and um it's kind of funny and there's an egg on the card so it's like this energy of like fertility this energy of creativity of like new beginnings um there's feathers on the card as well so that might be another message for you as well um yeah but to me and also think about the heart chakra it's about creating peace and look how like similar these cards are the colors and stuff it's kind of hard to tell because of this light I have but um, anyway it's like kind of green a lot on the cards it's this greenish color um, and the pink and there's hearts on this card as well too so more messages about connecting to you know your heart chakra allowing yourself to feel this peace and that actually acts as like medicine when you really begin to create this sense of relaxation in your body you begin to make decisions from this place of like harmony when you're making decisions from harmony that's what you're going to create in your external world right if you're making decisions from like this impulsive energy or from this bitterness or from this anger or from this like vengefulness and like from this like need to have justice you know like you know then it's going to be like imbalanced right because it's coming from this place of like you know expectation and so you might end up being disappointed but if you can make decisions from this energy of peace and feeling really at peace with who you are and the decisions you're making then you know nothing is going to 
nothing that happens externally is going to disturb that sense of balance, that sense of inner equilibrium that you've created for yourself. And that's empowering. You know, if you can stay anchored when things outside of you aren't going your way, and you can stay at peace, and you can stay loving and gentle and kind and compassionate and understanding, oh baby, you have won. Like, you are victorious. Like, nothing, if nothing can defeat you internally, then like, you know, you have won. Like, you are victorious. So, a lot of times we think winning comes with like some big trophy or some big prize, but winning sometimes just comes from Taking the higher route, taking the higher road, like creating peace for yourself rather than being caught up in this need to be right, which is kind of this other energy. And like, think about that in your relationships. Is it this energy of com competition and comparison, like power struggles and needing to be right, needing to make more money and needing to do all these different things in order to like prove prove your love to one another? Like that's not love. That's codependency. So a lot of times we were taught that in our earliest relationships is this energy of like competition and these power struggles but love is harmonious love is balanced love is peaceful right and if you didn't grow up in a peaceful home you won't believe that love is peaceful let me tell you i know because i did not grow up in a peaceful loving home at all like my home was very withdrawn very cold very distant very you know not connected at all so what we need to really do as adults is find this connection. What makes us feel connected? What makes us feel secure? It's not other people, I can guarantee you. So stop placing that on other people. It's not your home, so stop placing it on your home. It's not your job, so stop placing it on anything that's temporary. And really begin to find that sense of security within yourself by really knowing who you truly are and how you need to be taken care of and then taking action with your masculine energy to do those things for yourself and to create that sense of stability for yourself. Because we weren't taught that in childhood. I can tell you I wasn't. What is your advice for us, Spirit? I'm really liking this reading, though. What is your advice for us this week? Yes, the Five of Swords. This is the energy of needing to be right. Let go of the need to be right. I think we had the Five of Swords come up recently, too, as well. Because I remember this porcupine coming up and like feeling like all these sharp edges. So like, yes, and I was feeling that with this energy of like, if you make decisions from this en energy of like needing to be right, then you're gonna experience more like, more power struggles, more battles. And what we're really learning how to do is to create peace because we no longer have like battles in the external world if we're feeling at peace within, you know? Like, yes, things are gonna, you know, happen outside of our control, but if we can still stay at peace when those things are happening outside of our control, then like I said, you become victorious and you no longer need to be right because you're rising above the occasion. And, that's kind of like the Five of Swords is this energy, energy of this like bittersweet ending, this bittersweet victory of like, you know, like instead of trying to, you know, hurt anybody at all costs, how can you kind of, the lesson in the Five of Swords is my opinion is like, how can you walk away without like needing to take from anybody else or needing to hurt anyone else? How can you just, I don't know, it's like this energy of needing to let go in my opinion. So underneath the deck here is the lovers, which I love this, the, the reputation, representation of the otters floating in the water in the pink, so, and they're holding hands, I just think that's so cute, and I love that, because it's like, love takes the path least resistant, love does not battle, love does not hurt, love does not put each other down, love does not do that, love is patient, right, love is kind, love is all those things, whatever that prayer is, or that thing is, I don't know what right off the top of my head, but love is patient, and love is kind, and if you find yourself not being loving, and patient, and kind, especially towards yourself, then you're probably not going to be that in your relationships. And that's going to reflect it. That's going to mirror to you, right? Think about water. It mirrors. And it's like the lovers. It's that energy of like seeing yourself in another. When you recognize yourself in another, you know, <clears throat> all the things you love in other people are just a reflection of all the things that you love about yourself. So if you find it hard to love the things that you see in other people, you know, but you, you know, you love it in another person, you know, like how can you cultivate it within yourself? Like if you see that somebody's really compassionate, how can you cultivate that compassion within yourself? Okay, but what else is um, your advice with the Five of Swords? Okay, this one just fell out, but this, I'll get another one too, but this is serendipity in reverse, number 18 or nine. And when it comes in reverse, it's saying like you may have like, <laughs> it's like this energy of you may thought that you were, I'm gonna read it to you actually, because I think it's perfect. Because it goes perfectly with the Five of Swords in my opinion. Okay, it says, perhaps you felt almost certain that serendipitous events were meant to lead to something better. It was supposed to be the perfect business or that person you gave your heart to was supposed to be the one. Yet it all fell apart. Consider this. Sometimes synchronicity and serendipity come together to lead you directly into difficulties in order to deliver an important lesson you need to learn before you hit the jackpot. 
don't get caught up in the drama of disappointment. And I was totally feeling that. I think I even said disappointment earlier. There really is a silver lining in the clouds. And look, at we even had this in the clouds, you know, a silver lining in the clouds. So that's crazy. Um, spirit already knows what you need and is guiding you to where you are meant to go. Pay attention to the signs presented to you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, spirit. <laughs> and look, even on this card, there's clouds too. And there really is a silver lining in the clouds, and there's even clouds on this card. You can't really tell because, like I said, the lighting is kind of off. But, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. Sometimes when spirit does that, I just can't even feel because I'm like, okay. Um, but that feels right. It's like this, and I was saying that when things aren't going your way in the outside, instead of getting disappointed, can you create these energies of peace? Can you create these energies of love and happiness and joy? Because your, your sense of happiness and your sense of peace does not come from anything externally. And oh my gosh, guys, I just had a vision of, okay, see the four-leaf clover on here? There's this song by Chris Stapleton I've been hearing on the radio. Something, I think it's called Start Over. But it talks about a four-leaf clover. And I that, had, that lyric has just been sticking out to me. And I, I saw it instantly when I saw that four-leaf clover. That's crazy. But so that song might be a, a message for you if you want to look it up. Maybe the lyrics are a sign or a message for you. Okay, so I think that was actually good. I was going to pull another one there, but I don't think so. I am going to get one. And then un look, underneath the deck is come to the edge in reverse. So it's like, don't let your fears lead you. Like right now, your fears might be leading you into places you don't really want to go. So allow yourself to take some time to distance self-care. Make yourself feel really good. Create this peace and this connection to your body and to your home and like feeling really safe and secure in yourself. And then make a decision from there. Like you don't need to be impulsive with this decision is what I'm picking up on. You can take your time. <clears throat> There's no need to rush. And don't make the decision from this need to be right. Make this decision from what brings you true happiness, what brings you true joy, true peace, okay? So, what is your overall message for us, Spirit? For this week. I love it. It's so much green, and I love that because we're working with the earth chakra or we're working with the element of earth this week compassion it says caring empathy acceptance gentleness ah i love when that happens and it's number 28 or 10 so those might be a number for you but i love the energy of compassion i love working with Kuan yin and mother mary she's even the energy of compassion and when i see her energy actually she's very green she has a very green energy so you might be drawn to the color green or to wear green or I even painted this wall green. <laughs> you know, and underneath the, this deck is Seiko Chakra, which I love because it's this energy of creativity. And we had that egg, which is also the energy of fertility, being connected to the womb. Also in my blog post, there's a, a message from the Divine Mother, which really um, I've been working with her in the Seiko Chakra to feel that sense of being held, that sense of being in the womb, you know, that energy of abundance, creativity, beauty, passion, pleasure sensuality, sexuality, connecting with that aspect of yourself and moving through it. When you're connecting with your sensuality and your sexuality, which we'll get into next week more, um, you're going to create a lot of, like, there's going to be a lot of probably shame and a lot of, like, um, like heaviness or darkness surrounding it. So creating a lot of self-care for yourself as you're moving through these, these um, you know, the resistance and the shame and allowing yourself to express yourself fully, creatively. So I'll read compassion to you and then we'll end this for this week. I love this card too. The energy I'm getting from it is beautiful. So you might want to connect with flowers as well um, as a way to, you know, create more softness or connect with that feminine energy. Release, accept, gently rise above. <laughs> your trust, your truest path forward is the path of compassion. And look at this is like a fork in the road. This is your path. Your path is compassion. I know that's really a deep part of my purpose is really having just more compassion for myself rather than judging yourself every time you want to judge yourself stop take a minute be patient give yourself some compassion and then you'll make dis different decisions that will like in those little tiny moments that will really alter your path the latin word for compassion literally means co-suffering this card is not an invitation to suffer but rather to allow yourself and others to rise up beyond sufferings through the light of genuine empathy and understanding the call to compassion is a call to accept people and situations for who they are and where they are at. As we let go of judgment, I'm not kidding you, it literally says that. 
as we let go of judgment and the need to fix a situation or to label things as good or bad, we begin to realize that every situation carries with it a gift and we each have unique lessons to learn. Uh, by judging or focusing on each other's faults, we contribute to keeping each other stuck in those places. Often, our lack of acceptance of other people stems from a deeper judgment of ourselves. Amen. As we learn to see and treat other, other and to treat each other in our highest light, we help open the passage for each to find his or way up into the sun. You're flipping kidding me. How is this even possible? Oh my god. <laughs> so before you judge someone for their shortcomings or mistakes, that a moment, take a moment to genuinely feel what it's like to stand in their shoes. Experience the world as they might and allow yourself to drop into the space of compassion. See them rising up and shining in full glory. See yourself in this same way. See yourself shining in full glory. Yes, it is also time to have compassion with yourself. Treat yourself with the same love and acceptance that you would share with someone that you deeply care about. Talk to yourself in a loving way. Encourage yourself. Look for the positive in your life. Remember that you are a human and you are learning, growing, and evolving each day. So, love your humanness and support each rising step on this journey with compassion. Honor yourself and others with the flower of compassion. Oh my gosh, I can't get over the synchronicity. That was beautiful. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it was healing for you. I do do private readings, so if you'd like to book one, you can find that information below. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time. Take care.